we're going to be talking a lot about how therapists and specifically how RTT therapists work with clients in a professional capacity to help them either lose weight or work on their health. And so, you know, so many people have challenges. Uh, there's no shortage of information about what you should eat, how you should exercise and how you should treat your mind when it comes to your wellness, your you know wellness making machine, as Marissa says, with your body. But for some reason, people don't do it, right? And even I don't do it all the time. And you know, the only reason for that, as Marissa says, is our minds, right, and our our own belief systems, and you know what we feel we're worth, and obviously priorities with our time, right? And today we're going to talk to Marissa about how she works with people and how other therapists work with people in these different categories and how you really get transformation as a professional to a client. So we'll do a little bit of experience today and we can uh, really get so much from Marissa about what she's seen work over the years. And, you know, she's obviously built the whole brand of Dietless Life and that's amazing in itself and so many great things. If you haven't seen the program on that, it's it's amazing. And hopefully somewhere down the road, we'll do a, a really awesome live event for that. But Marissa, welcome to the call. And I wonder what's your initial perspective of what I was saying there about why people do health and why they don't from a therapist perspective. So like when a new therapist is working with someone on weight loss or on health, what should they start with? How do they start this project with their client? We always have to look at the emotion, you know, overeating is an emotional reaction. No one says, gosh, I'm so happy. My life's so amazing. I need pizza, ice cream, and Pringles and beer. So we already understand that when we're feeling a little bit out of sorts, we often turn to food. And that's not surprising because as a baby, if you were sad or lonely or cold or scared or bored, you were given food. You were given mother's milk. We still talk about the milk of human comfort. And so we learn very quickly that fatty, creamy stuff makes everything better. And it's when we're unhappy or unfulfilled or bored or lonely that we turn to food. And so if overeating is emotional, then you cannot cure a logical, an emotional problem with logic. Diets are logical. I know you want a burger, have a salad. I know you want a cake, have an apple, but that doesn't work. You can only deal with an emotional issue like overeating, binging, purging, starving, dieting, punishing yourself with an emotional um, uh, cure. So you have to take an emotional issue such as overeating or binging. And you have to use a different emotion to get rid of it. You can't use the logic because in the battle between emotion and logic, emotion always wins and logic always loses. But anyone will say, I know what I should eat, but I can't do it. I know I shouldn't do that, but I can't do it. I go to Weight Watchers, come home and eat three tubs of Ben and Jerry's. If someone says I can't have a cake, I have four pieces of cake. And so we need people like RTT therapists to understand the emotion that runs all destructive behaviors, including destructive eating. And people do eat destructively. They eat to the point of being uncomfortable. They often purge. They take diet pills. They take laxatives. And so we're, we're using a much better emotion to make people better because no babies will go, oh, my God, I can't get enough milk. I feel so bad I ate a cookie. I've got to run around the playroom all day to burn off those calories. No one is born like that. We acquire that. And if we acquire it, we can overcome it very, very easily. When someone comes in and let's say they they want to lose weight, but you can feel that there's that resistance and they've logically decided that it's the right place to, to be. What's the most common reasons why someone has these resistances or, or finds themselves not actually taking action? Well, a diet says, tell me, so let me take away everything you love. If you look at the diet, what can you have? You can have vegetables, you can have salads, you can have grilled fish, but you can't have any things that you think you love. So, And we know that human nature is if I can't have it, I want it. The minute you say I can't have ice cream, I want it. The minute you say I can't go to the bathroom, I want to go. You know, you could go on a diet. Even the Atkins diet says you can eat lobster and cream and butter, but no fruit. And now I think I, I die for a peach. I really want raspberries because I can't have them. So we have to understand the psychology of overeating, the psychology of what's going on. Because when you understand it, you can completely cure it. It's very easy to cure it. You know why? We are all born normal. You, can, you can't make a little baby over it. You can go, I spent ages making that broccoli. It's organic. I pureed it. Think of the starving children in Africa. They still spit it out. You know, every children's party, you'll find a half-eaten sandwich, some chocolate, a bit of cake, because they don't finish anything. Because when we're in the womb, we have this interesting belief 
food's always there because it is in the womb. It's like being in the four seasons. You have 24 hour room service. So if we're born normal about food, the question is, where did it go wrong? What happened to that little baby that could leave anything, would ask for an ice cream, have three bites, go, I don't want any more, would not finish anything? How did we go from that to someone who can't resist food, can't say no, and says, I, I never know what full is. What, what is full? I don't even know it. And it's an interesting journey to find out why and to put back what nature gave you, which is the most normal, healthy, respectful relationship with food. And so when you're working with a client, it sounds like most of the time, if you start on the journey of weight loss, you probably progress to the journey of just being enough in general. Yeah. So it appears in weight loss, right? But it really shows up in every area of their life. Yeah. And, you know, one of the most common things is parents who say, come on, the school bus is coming. We've got to go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Or whoever finishes first gets the first piece of cake. And we train children to race through food when they naturally want to engage with their gums and a baby won't take a second bite until they fully finish with the first one. And so we train people into these really, really bad habits, racing through food, pushing your feelings down. Of course, the stomach is the seat of all emotions because I feel lonely, I feel sad, I feel empty, I feel bored. Let's just eat. And we're taught that by the media too, which says a real number on us about eating for all the wrong reasons. But a great therapist will go back and find out. And it often is that not if I'm not enough, then guess what I need? More, 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 anything, more cake, more alcohol, more stuff, more shopping, more, more screen time, more followers. And our biggest disease is the not enoughness, which the diet industry really do a number on all of this saying you need more, more, more. And we have to go back at source because when you know you're enough, you don't need when you go, that, that cake was lovely. I've had four bites, don't need any more. That was a great um, dinner, but I'm absolutely full now. So the opposite of I'm enough is I'm not enough. When you're not enough, you'll always need more and you'll never be satisfied. When you are enough, you're easily satisfied. You're easily sated. And the goal of therapy is to make everyone know they're enough. They're enough. They're worthy. They matter. And also, if you know you're enough, you're worthy, you matter. When someone says, oh, go on, I made this specially, or surely you can have one piece of cake or one bit won't hurt you, you can say, it looks lovely, but I'm just not a cake person. Or it smells delicious, but, you know, I ate an hour ago, I'm just not hungry. Or, yes, that looks okay, I take a little bit home with me for later, because you have that sense of self, which is, you know, your body is the most mind-boggling thing you will ever own in your entire life. Because I'm a food lover. Actually, most of us are food abusers. We abuse our lovely bodies by eating too much of terrible food. And then we say, but I'm a food lover. Actually, you're a food abuser. You ought to learn to love your body. The only way you can ever have a body that you absolutely love is to love the only body you'll ever have. Because as you love it and treat it with respect, it will change dramatically. Just simple things like drinking water, getting enough sleep, eating some green stuff makes a huge difference. If you do just a few good things for your body, it will do numerous things back. But binging on Pringles and chips and ice cream and cake and pizza is not doing a good thing. It's hurting the only body you'll ever have. You'll never get another one. And it is the most incredible thing you possess. But you have to come at it with love and respect. And diets don't do that at all, not even a little bit. And so can you, before, I'm going to ask you to, to walk us through a little exercise. But before we do that, can you talk about why you love hypnosis for the purposes of weight loss and why you know, from an RTT perspective, you love teaching that to use for that? Yeah. And I'm just actually reading a comment by Laura who says, even dieting seriously for several months, my body won't let go of overweight. So why is RTT not working on this? So we do work on that. But the thing that hypnosis does that nothing else does is three things happen in hypnosis that do not have out of it. One is in hypnosis, you drop into this network of intelligence where your mind influences your body and you influence your mind. And in that network, your mind sends different messages. Instead of going, oh, my God, I'm starving. It goes, actually, your stomach's the size of a fist. You are hungry, but you can wait an hour to eat better food. And then it begins, and now you're full. So it sends different messages. I'm not starving. It doesn't go, oh, my God, cake's calling my name. I can't resist. It goes, no, you're indifferent to cake. Not only does the mind send different, better 
really helpful messages to the body. The second thing is that it interprets the message from the body differently. So when people think, oh, I'm feeling, it says you're, you're feeling tired, you're feeling dehydrated, you're not actually hungry at all. And the third thing is we have a critical factor in our mind that screens all our thoughts. And if I said, okay, go and speak at a rally tomorrow, an anti, I don't know, an anti-war rally, the critical factor say, oh, no, I couldn't possibly do that. In hypnosis, that critical factor shuts down. So the idea of taking sugar out of your coffee, the idea of not eating cake, the idea of living without burgers and fries and pizzas actually becomes really appealing. And I can say, you know, I don't know what you did, Marissa, but I've never been able to eat chocolate since I saw it. Since the day I saw you, I don't eat bread. I don't even what you did to my brain. I was working on super size, super skinny. The girl said, what have you done to my brain? I was the carb queen and now I'm just not interested in carbs. I really like salads and vegetables and grilled protein. So hypnosis does something that no other therapy does. It goes back and it finds out the root, the root cause of where you got this dysfunctional relationship with you, but it simultaneously stops it there and then. And we'll go back to, you know, my mom made me eat everything on my plate. My dad wouldn't let me get down from the table. My mom would use guilt, how long I spent making that. My grand said, if you love me, you'll finish it, and so on and so on. And, and so you learn very quickly, how did you get this relationship? We'll give you an example. One of my clients said, I hardly ever saw my dad, but once a month when I did see him, we always had burger and milkshakes. And now when I'm sad, my brain just like, burger, milkshakes, burger, milkshakes, I have to have them. In Mass, another client told me that she didn't see her dad either, but every now and again, he'd send her in the post these chewits, little chewy sweets, and she'd eat them out. And she said, I felt love. My dad sent me those candies. And every time my husband's away, I buy all these chewy candies and eat them because I'm looking for the memory. Because food has memories, good and bad. Go, oh, my God. The idea of ice cream with raspberry sauce and sprinkles or, oh, red velvet cupcakes. You go, oh, but the thought of un undercooked eggs or haddock or eels or oysters. No, I can't eat that. And if ever, ever, ever food has made you sick, you know you can't eat it again because food has memories, good memories, bad memories. And all of those memories influence us. The way you feel about food is down to the pictures you make in your head and the words you say, which you're free to change at any time. You know, I, I used to love tea with milk and honey. I actually can't even imagine. I could never drink that again because I just changed my mind. A lot of the stuff I loved. I used to love drinking Diet Coke. I would never, never drink that now. And that wasn't effort. It was easy because I changed the pictures. I We only eat something the picture is right. If I sneezed on your dinner, you wouldn't eat it. If someone coughed all over your pizza, you wouldn't eat it. If someone bled all over your dinner, you wouldn't eat it. And our job is to make the picture wrong for the wrong foods and right for the right foods. And we know that works because what is a vegan? A vegan says... I couldn't eat that. I can't eat anything that had a pulse. I can't eat something that had a face. That isn't right or wrong, but it's something that works. An Orthodox Jew wouldn't eat lobster. A devout um, Hindu would never eat beef. So we understand that if the picture is wrong, we don't eat it. But you see, food companies make the picture right. We call McDonald's. Happy Meal. We call Cadbury's Fun Size. We call chocolate things like Hero and Celebration and Divine. And so we make these people are making the pictures right when they should be making the pictures wrong. So we have to make the pictures good pictures wrong, good pictures right, and the wrong pictures wrong. And it is very easy to do. But you're up against food companies who want to make terrible food. That's why they call it farm fresh and barn fresh and sun enriched where and there's no such thing as sunny delight or barn fresh but we, we're really up against it and we have to take back our own power and stop all of that before i get into this next little segment because marissa i'm going to ask you to do a, a little live experience with us and we've got so many choices but before i do that in the chat can someone put anybody everybody if you've had some sort of incredible experience with a marissa hypnosis or exercise or meditation or webinar or you've had rtt any of these things, can you just put in the chat that you've had an incredible experience? Maybe it was just on the YouTube channel and you did Money is Beautiful, or you've done some of our hypnosis and maybe share some of what's been happening for you with all of that. I know for me, um, I've had so, so many of the Money is Beautiful hypnosis track. I've listened to it so many times. We got 
Karen here saying she's lost 45 pounds after RTT. So that's incredible. And Denise, um, who's lost 33 pounds in just a few months, she's cut sugar out of her food choice. She only eats two grams per month now, which is amazing. And that's all to do with our TT. Yeah, incredible people. Wow, I'm seeing so many things popping up in the chat across platforms right now. So incredible. So Marissa, we've got so many tools at our disposal. A lot of people have experienced various hypnosis. Um, oh, we get the DICC technique people are referencing, which is D-I-C-C-C. Um, a lot of people uh, say, say they cried on I Am Enough. Um, a lot of private RTT sessions. Um, RTT grads on here, which is amazing to see. So, you know, today I've gotten to experience some more of your different practices as we've been filming. And I wonder which one uh, feels most inspiring for you right now. There's like ladder of looping thoughts. There's the um, dialogue with your future self. Um, we can do uh, a hypnosis or we can go back and do uh, some scenes work. But if we were going to give them an experience of what a therapist does with a client to work on weight loss and health and making their body a wellness making machine, which one kind of feels right for you right now? Someone would say, I never want to eat sugar. And I would say, no, I don't do want to eat sugar, but just a little. I want to leave food. I want to say, no, we're all different. So I say, I never want to eat cake. I'd love to have cake, but I want to have one piece of cake and say, that was delicious. And I'm done now for the next week. So put in the chat what you would like to get from your session. One of the great things about RTT is we personalize it. It's personalized. It's tailored to each client. I say to them, what do you want? If I could give you what you really, really want, and you had to explain it in a way that made sense, I could give it to you. So please put in the chat bar what you want. Because when I start the hypnosis in a minute, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to use your requests to oh, make wow. it permanent and personal. There's so a lot. Go, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot coming on. So easier to exercise, feeling safe in my body, hormonal balance, um, want to lose 20 kilos and become an RTT facilitator, stop a sugar habit, overcome sugar addiction. Um, diet is literally perfect and can't drop any more weight, but want to drop 10, uh, stop assessing, obsessing about food. Um, I, I want to say I've eaten enough food, um, crisps and snacks, uh, get rid of cravings for junk food, um, get rid of eating too much sour candy, eating in moderation, stopping before they're full, stop binge eating. Wow. Okay. So lots of, lots of great goals here. Reducing wine consumption, eating smaller portions, reducing sugar consumption. Yeah. Let me just give you some handy little hints right now. First of all, someone said, I want to lose my 20 kilos overweight. Here's the rule of the mind. The minute you prefer something with my, you own it. I want to say, here's my husband. Here's Skip. He's over. Here's my lovely computer. Look at my lovely garden. Because these these are mine. If I say, "Oh my God, my fat legs, my fat wobbly stomach, my craving for pasta, my my need for chocolate cake every day," I now own that. And the mind does not want to give up anything you prefix with my. So it isn't your twenty pounds. If someone said, "Hey, I'll give you liposuction. We'll get well, put it in a jar. I'm taking it home because I own that twenty pounds, and I got to take it home with me." If someone said, "Hey, I'm going to help you lose weight," go, "Well, no, it's." my fat i need to keep it so you must never prefix anything with my unless you want to own it forever secondly all pain is linked to the word loss there's nothing good to lose if you think of loss it all pain is linked to loss when you say i'm going to lose weight i've lost a bit of weight your mind works so hard to get that back so there are other words dropping shedding reducing discarding letting go of but loss people say i've lost my mind i've lost the plot i lost my house i lost the baby we lost everything in covid i lost that client i'm just a loser 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 and kids at school say loser Loser, you're a loser because losing is a word that only means pain to the mind. You know, if you went to a deprived country, they wouldn't go, hey, you've got a baby and the baby's lost weight. This is where they go, this is really bad. The baby's losing weight. That's why when you have a baby, they weigh it every week. They go, oh, you've, you're so lucky. You've got them with a fast metabolic. It was going to be really skinny. Well done you. They go, this baby is too thin. So you don't want to use the word lose. And finally, there's some magic, magic expressions that actually changed my life. And here's one of them. I am choosing. I am choosing to refuse cake. I'm choosing to feel great. I'm choosing to go to the gym and do the plank. And I'm choosing to love it. I'm choosing to have vegetables instead of fries. I could have the fries, but I'm choosing not to. When you say choosing, your mind goes, 
oh, you have a choice. I mean, when you go, oh, I want the fries. I love the fries. I've got to have beans. How boring is that? I want the cake, but I've got to have some berries. I feel like a rabbit here. I want the paste, the mashed potatoes, but I've got to have lettuce. You see, your mind picks up that you're resisting. When you say, I'm choosing, I'm choosing it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a whole different thing. So never say, oh, look at that yummy cake. I can't have it. It's so unfair. So I could have it. I can have cake every day for the rest of my life. I'm choosing not to, and I'm choosing to love being indifferent to cake because you are directing your mind. Those words changed my entire life. I'm choosing to say no to this is I'm choosing to love it. It's such a great thing to do. So, okay, um, I'm going to have a quick look at some of the um, things you put in. Skip, do interrupt me and, and let's move on as I get ready to start to really do some amazing hypnotherapy on all of you. But do carry on, Skip. Yeah, just so many amazing things. And what I heard from what you just said, and everyone could start to type in um, you know, their intentions like you are, and then adding what Marissa just voiced, which is essentially think less about what you don't want and more about what you do want. So if your goal is to lose 30 pounds or 10 kilos, you say, I want to shed 10 pounds or 30 kilos, or I want to be more in my ideal body, or I want to develop incredibly healthy habits. And then the shedding 10 pounds is a byproduct of the things that you do want. So what she was saying there is start to focus on the things you want, not on the things you don't want. So go and put in the chat, what are the things you do want? So I'm seeing, I want to gain muscle and tone. Beautiful. I want to crave natural, fresh food. Beautiful. I want to develop healthy habits. Amazing. I want to be healthy and happy with myself. I want to crave healthy food. I love that. Absolutely. Someone's like, I'm a broccoli fanatic. Um, I want to be more enthusiastic about doing exercise. Um, I, I want to crave things other than chocolate. Um, I want to only crave healthy food. I want to feel confident about my health. I want to feel comfortable in my body. I want to kickstart my metabolism. Um, I want to get my waist back. Ah, oh, the AC is very clever, very clever. I'm in radiant health. And then Marissa also says, wanting is very wanting, right? So I love that one where I am radiant health. It's a, a beautiful one where it's a very present now one. And of course, we can work through this, but I'm, I'm sure Marissa is about to do it in the hypnosis. So I yeah, whenever you're to, ready. Dr. Chris has just sent a message to me saying he's a clinical psychologist and he's a researcher. He'd like to connect with my team. Chris, please email me marissa at marissapeer.com. We'd love to do some RTT trials with your patients because... We get results. I actually was asked to lecture at the Royal College of Medicine in London. And they said, I don't know what you do, but we can't, in our weight loss, we can't get people to lose two pounds in a year. And you're getting people to lose half their body weight or just effortlessly stop eating bad foods. And so I went to lecture for the Royal College of Medicine, feeling a bit, I thought, ooh, who am I to go there? But when I saw them, I thought, oh, no, you really do need this. And I actually loved it. So I'd love to work with you, Dr. Krish. Let's connect and um, let's do some RTC trials with your patients that would be amazing i just want to tell you one more thing before we start because you know nature all the things you like nature wants you to eat sugar nature wants you to remember where sugar is and go back for more nature wants you to eat food when you see it nature wants you to be so scared of hunger that you shove anything in your mouth why is that well imagine let's go back you know 500 years not eating was scary. To this day, we think, oh, my God, I'm hungry, and I'm just going to eat, and I'm going to mainline those jelly beans now. I just eat a packet of tacos rather than feel hungry because your body is scared of hunger because the number one killer, even 500 years, was not disease, and it wasn't war. It was hunger. So we are hardwired to be scared of hunger. We're also hardwired to remember where sugar is and go back for more. Imagine you lived in a tribe and you're wandering around and all you did every day was find some root vegetables, find some fruits and berries and nuts and seeds or eggs, but occasionally you'd find honey. And that was like Christmas all, and Halloween all rolled into one. You get as much honey as you eat the honey, take it back. And the next day you wake up and say, honey, i got to go back for more. You might have found ripe mangoes. You wouldn't think, mm, see those mangoes? They're full of fructose. I just have a half. You think, oh, my God, when am I getting these again? I'm going to binge on the mangoes. And that was a very good idea because the binging got you through lean times. Now we think 
there's a vending machine next to my desk. And I keep going, but I've got this Ben and Jerry's in the fridge and it's calling my name. No one says, you know, when I get into bed and I have that lettuce, it keeps the peas. I keep going back for more peas. I just can't seem to resist cabbage. It calls my name. It's only sugar that does that because sugar historically was actually, it never poisoned us, by the way. Nobody got poisoned from honey. Nobody got poisoned from eating some mango. And so we knew it was a safe food that would pack on calories and it was very clever. Now there are no lean times, but we, our brain still says you need to go back for more, go back for more. Imagine you lived in a tribe and the hunters came back with an antelope. You go, mm, don't fancy antelope. I'm just going to say no. Two days later, you think, oh my God, I should have eaten the antelope because now there's no more protein and I'm just eating nuts and berries here. And so we're also wired when we see food to eat it. So all of these things that nature is doing, making you be scared of hunger, remember where sugar is, go back for more. Eat food when it's in your line of vision, not being able to say no to food and crave the only food in nature that's half fat and sugar, mother's milk. In nature, there's no food that's half fat and half sugar. There's fatty food like olives and avocado and fish, and there's sugary food like berries, maybe there's nothing that's a combination. So all of these things are working against you until you have to go, oh, right, there's that panic because I haven't eaten. But in an hour, I'll be home. I've got a lovely chicken casserole in the fridge. I've got some lovely things ready. Or, oh, look, you know, I'm there's the sugar calling my name. I'm not going to keep there in my house. I'm going to put it in the car or not buy it. I still do that. I think I'm not going to buy that stuff. Or I just buy a little one. I never buy, buy one, get one free. If people come to stay with me, when my father used to come and say, I'd buy the stuff that he loved like rum and raisin ice cream, which I hated. So these are hacks that are running you, but you can learn to work around them. So before I begin, Skip, is there anything else that you want me to talk about or ask me or tell me before I begin? I think we could talk about it after. I think everyone's going to love the experience. So let me just say one more thing. An addiction is classified as anything that takes you away from a bad feeling to a good one. We can be addicted to pain medication. We can be addicted to aerobics. We can be addicted to anything. But many foods are addictive. Food companies work really hard to make food. And you know what they do? They go, bet you can't eat just one. They had the nerve to put on Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. They've never put that in a packet of cigarettes or a bottle of whiskey. But food companies work to make the worst food in the world addictive. But you can get over that. So, okay, I think we should begin. We've got plenty of time to do a little hypnosis session and just reactivate, remanifest a normal relationship with the ability to love this body and treat it with respect. And of course, you can have whatever you want. It's not about saying you can't have this, it's about saying you can have anything. But how great it is to want really healthy food. And if a vegan can do that just by changing their mindset, if a vegetarian can do it, if a Hindu can do that, if an Orthodox you can do that, you can do it too. So if you're ready, hypnosis is really easy. It's just about one thing. I'm going to show you. You look up like you're looking into your eyebrows. Keep your eyeballs up. Close the lids down. So let's do that right now. Just roll your eyes up like that. Keep your eyeballs up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take another deep breath, keeping your eyeballs up. Breathe in, breathe out. And just one more time, keeping your eyeballs rolled up. Keep your eyeballs up. And as you exhale, keeping your eyeballs up, just close your eyelids right down, all the way down. And as your eyelids shut down, please now keep your eyeballs shut. I want you to drop your chin to get that very same looking down feeling that you might feel as you look over balcony or down a flight of stairs. Right now, you're looking down 10 steps. You have that looking down sensation. You're moving on to step 10 right now. As each muscle, every nerve turns loose, lets loose, and you go deeper. You're taking step nine and you can see your feet, hear your feet, feel your feet treading each step. As you move down, drift down, travel down to an even deeper level, you are taking steps seven and six. As each muscle, every nerve turns loose, lets loose, and you go deeper, deeper, deeper into an awareness of yourself, you're taking step five. 
You're taking step four, even the sound of your own heartbeat is taking you deeper into hypnosis. You're taking step three, going deeper with the sound of your own breathing. You're taking step two, going deeper. You're taking step one, just go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper. Just go deeper and deeper into an awareness of yourself. And as you go deeper, as you go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper, you're aware of a powerful, permanent, all-pervasive change taking place in you. As you go deeper, your brilliant subconscious mind is remembering that you were born with a perfect relationship with food. You were born able to leave food. You were born knowing when you'd had enough. We're all born like that. So we're going to just for a minute or two go back and just have a look at what happened, what went on. How did you surpass or suppress that ability? A little baby when they've had enough stops. You're a baby. In the womb, food was there 24 hours a day. And when you were born, you had enough and then you stopped. But somewhere, somehow, you acquired some different habits. You started to suppress the good habits and take up the bad ones. We're going to go back and just have a look at what happened. And when we find that information, it will be an absolute game changer. And by the way, you can't relive anything. You only review it. Anything you go back to has already happened to you. And since you dealt with the experience, you can easily deal with the memory. So I want you to imagine right now, just breathe. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. The first thing you did when you came on the planet was take a breath and then give one away. And that's balance. You were able to give and receive a breath. Breathe in, breathe out. So just keep breathing. And imagine you're switching on a television set and you're looking at a video of your entire life. You're starting today. You're putting on this video of you today. But you're just about to rewind back. You're going back from August the 3rd, warm right back to the time when you were just a little kid and something happened that made you eat in a destructive manner. So right now on the count of five, that video of your life is rewinding, rewinding, rewinding. You are going backwards in time. You're drifting back, moving back. You're being pulled back. On the count of four and three, you're in a time tunnel. It is taking you backwards, pulling you backwards. Years, months, weeks, days are peeling away from your body as you're further back and further back, all the way back. On the count of two and one, you are drifting back to a scene, place, event, time. That is all to do with how, where, why, when you got some dysfunctional issues about food. You're becoming younger. Smaller, lighter, drifting right back, right now, just be there. And as I click my fingers, the scene is springing to mind. As I click my fingers, you're able to look over and around and through. As soon as I click my fingers, you're able to be aware. And you could answer these questions instantly from your subconscious mind. As I click my fingers, this scene where you are right now, is it daytime? Or is it nighttime? Are you inside or are you outside? Are you on your own or is somebody with you? And here's the only question that matters in this scene where you are now. What are you doing, seeing, feeling? What are you experiencing? Stay in that scene. See what you saw. Feel what you felt. As I click my fingers, you're going to hear something being said to you. Here it comes on the count of one, two, three, your ears are open. You can hear something being said about you, around you, in your line of hearing that's all to do with how and where and why you learned to suppress that normal relationship with food and to pick up a dysfunctional relationship. Stay in that scene, look over it, look around it, look right through it. And now we're going to go back to another thing to do with the same thing. How, where, why, when did you learn these unhealthy habits? That's all they are, unhealthy habits. Just as you learn them, you can be free of them forever. So right now on the count of five again, you are drifting back, being moved back, being pulled back again. You are becoming younger, smaller, lighter, shorter, years, months, weeks, days are peeling away from your body you're drifting right back right now to a vivid scene that absolutely is the cause the reason the root of how you got this overeating issue not trying at all just be there
Again, as I click my fingers, it's rather like you've switched on your computer. A picture's filling up the screen. You are right in the middle of that screen. And you know the answer to every question I'm putting to you. This scene where you are now. Is it daytime or is it nighttime? Are you inside or outside? Are you on your own or is anybody with you? And here's the only question that matters, this scene in your mind where you are now. What are you doing? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? What are you experiencing? I want you to feel what you felt. See what you saw. And as I click my fingers on the count of one, two, and three, you can hear exactly what you heard then stay in that scene. Hear what you heard, see what you saw, feel what you felt, experience what you experienced. I want you to look over, to look around, to look through those scenes and go, oh, yes. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, of course, that scene then all those years ago is exactly why I can't leave food or can't resist food or feel powerless around food. Stay in that scene, look over it. Look around it, look through it, look at it with fascination, with insight, with awareness. And see that any kid in the scene you're in now would have grown up feeling the way you felt and doing what you do. Just look at it for another minute and now let's do this just one more time. But this time we're going to do something just a little bit different. The cause of overeating is almost always this not enoughness. I'm not enough and I need more. So this time we're going to go back to a specific scene. It's all to do with when you picked up a belief that says I'm not enough. And if I'm not enough, I need more. And if you have that belief, you're in very good company because it affects 80% of us, including me. So one more time, you're back. On the count of five, again, you are becoming younger, smaller, lighter, shorter. On the count of four, years, months, weeks, days are peeling away from your body. On the count of three and two, you're in that time tunnel going backwards, 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 traveling back, moving back, being taken back. You're becoming younger, smaller, lighter, shorter. On the count of one, just be there. As I click my fingers, it's rather like switching on a television set. The picture's warming up. You're right in the middle of the screen and you can answer every question I ask of you. And here's the first one, this scene where you are now. Is it daytime or nighttime? Are you inside or out? Are you on your own? Was anybody with you? And actually none of those questions matter except for this one. In this scene where you are now, what are you doing? Seeing, feeling, what are you experiencing? I want you to feel what you felt. See what you saw. And as I click my fingers one more time on the count of one, two, three, here it comes here, what you heard. I want you to look over and around and through that scene with fascination. Look at that. That's where I didn't feel enough. That scene is all to do with how I grew up believing I wasn't enough, wasn't good enough, smart enough, worthy enough, pretty enough, you name it. And once you can see where you bought into your not enoughness, you can see that, of course, if we start from I'm not enough, we need more. And for many of us, that's more food. So stay in that scene with fascination, with insight, look over, look around, look through how, where, why, when you bought into the lie that you were not enough because it isn't true. But when you feel it's true, it doesn't matter if it's not true. It feels so painful. I want you to imagine, still with your eyes shut, that you're opening out your left hand and you're opening out your right hand so your palms are facing up to the ceiling. In your left hand, you're looking at the three scenes. You went back to the first scene, the second scene, about where you got these dysfunctional eating habits, and the third scene where you decided you weren't enough. And then I want you to look at your right hand, which is you today with these issues, not being able to leave, you're not able to say no to food, eating badly. And your mind is saying, look, these three scenes you went back to without a shadow of doubt, these are the scenes that caused you to eat badly. You might say, well, most of that's all great. What am I going to do now? Well, this is what you're going to do now. The best bit's just coming up. But I want you to say out loud, 
that kid is not me anymore because, and you might say, what, imagine your mother made you finish everything on your plate. Your mother wouldn't ever allow you to have cake. My mother never allowed me to have cake until I would search the house for it. You didn't have the food other food had. I want you to say out loud, that's not me because, and finish that. Says, I can eat whatever I like. I can leave food. I can throw. I don't have to eat stuff just because someone else made it. So on the count of one, two, and three, let's go. Repeat after me. That's not me anymore because just define to me why that isn't you. Shout at the screen why that's not you. Tell me why that isn't you. Tell yourself why that isn't you. Keep going. That cannot be me anymore because start and end that sentence. That cannot be me anymore because. And now let's go on to scene two. You can do this longer in your home. I want you to look at the second scene where you learn to overcome your normal ability to stop food when you had enough. And I want you to repeat after me. Let's go right now. That's not me anymore because finish that statement. And again, that cannot be me anymore. Start and finish that sentence. That cannot be me anymore because. And you can say, because I can eat whatever I like. I can leave food. I can choose food. We're doing this very quickly, but you can elongate this and extend this in your own time. The third scene where you thought you were not enough, so you had to have more of something. I want you to say out loud with me, let's go. Repeat after me. That's not me anymore because, finish that sentence. And just one more time, that cannot be me anymore for the rest of my life because I am enough and now I know I'm enough. I can have more, but I don't need it. I'm enough. I want you to say, because I'm enough, I'm satisfied with things other than food. Repeat this statement word for word. Because I'm enough, I'm filled and nourished with things other than food. And just keep your eyes closed as we just do a few minutes of powerful transformational words. As you go deeper into an absolutely relaxed stage, as you go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper, as you go deeper, you're aware of a powerful, profound transformation taking place in you as you go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper. You're aware of a powerful, permanent transformation taking place in you. Every single day you move on from one phenomenal accomplishment to another. Every day you recognize that you were born with an appetite that I've had enough now. And even as you think about your appetite, the ability to tell you when to stop, your apposet is coming back. I want you to imagine this dial in your mind that you can turn down so that you get satisfied very quickly. I want you to squeeze your fist and say to yourself right now, my stomach is the size of my fist. I have a tiny shrunken stomach. I want you to imagine that your stomach is so small, so tiny, when you eat food so quickly after 10 bites, that food hits your stomach wall and it sends a message of fullness back to your brain. And this happens over and over again. You eat 10 bites of food. You take the time to chew that food and your small shrunken stomach. Your stomach is so small that that stomach, that food hits the walls of your stomach so fast and it sends a feeling of fullness to your brain. And you have this perfect communication going on your mind tells you you know you get full so quickly so you better eat really good food and you're remembering to eat healthy to eat delicious vegetables wonderful fats lean protein you start with good stuff you understand that your body is this mind-boggling perfect amazing thing and as you do just a few good things for your body, drinking more water, eating slowly, eating better food, getting enough sleep, your body does so many things back. Your metabolic rate goes up. Your digestion improves. And just as you're imagining having this small stomach the size of your fist, I want you to imagine you can look at a dial in your mind, rather like a dial on your heating or on your stereo or on your computer. I want you to imagine that is your metabolic rate. I want you to turn it right up to 10. I want you to crank it 
turn it, lever it up to maximum. Do you imagine you can wedge it, jam it, glue it onto maximum? So you have a perfect metabolic rate. Whatever you eat, your metabolic rate burns it off. Mm -hmm. Everything you eat, your body uses to build a perfect body for you. You have a phenomenal metabolic rate. You have amazing digestion. You have a small stomach and you're satisfied with less food. You are filled and nourished by the good food that you eat. And you are satisfied so quickly. You prefer healthy food. And you can hear yourself saying with such unshakable conviction, I'm not a sugar person. I'm not really into fast food. You can hear yourself saying, no, no, I've had enough. No, that's not my thing. No, it looks lovely, but I just don't eat that. You find yourself saying no so easily. So just let yourself go. I want you to see yourself having this wonderful, healthy, respectful relationship with food and having a wonderful, healthy, respectful relationship with your body. I want you to hear yourself saying, thank you, but I've had enough, or it's lovely, I simply can't eat more. I want you to see it, to hear it, to feel it, use your senses. So just let yourself go deeper and deeper and deeper. Just allow yourself to go deeper, to drift deeper, to sink deeper. And as you go deeper, your body is becoming a super efficient fat burning machine. Your brilliant body takes everything you eat and metabolizes it perfectly. Your body is becoming a super efficient fat burning machine. And you ask yourself a question at every meal, is this food fat burning? or fat storing, fat is your friend, sugar is your enemy. You eat selectively, you eat slowly. The opposite of love is not hated, it is indifferent. You are indifferent to sugar, indifferent to junk food, indifferent to highly processed food. You eat selectively. You are now and forever a selective eater. You're indifferent to sugar, indifferent to candy. You love your body. The only way to have a body you love is to love the body you have. And because you love the body you have, you refuse to punish it with sugar or gluten. You eat real food selectively. You crave healthy food. Your taste buds are sharper. Your appetite is highly tuned. Your digestion is perfect. Your metabolic rate is super efficient. That means you eat less food less frequently. But you're satisfied more. You can eat whatever you want, but you want healthy food. You eat selective. You know the stomach is the seat of all emotions. You only eat in response to real hunger. Your body is becoming a super efficient fat burning machine. You eat only in response to real hunger. You eat slowly. You eat selective. You extend the pleasure by eating less. Part of loving eating is to eat slowly, to extend the pleasure. You extend the pleasure by engaging with the food. You eat slowly, you eat less, but you feel amazing. You love the fact that you're a healthy eater. You are proud of being a healthy eater. You're proud that you are choosing to eat healthy, choosing to love it, choosing to eat selectively and choosing to love it. You are motivated to exercise, you're motivated to buy real food, to make real food. You're motivated to take control, to be responsible for what you eat and what you don't eat. Your metabolic rate is increasing. Your appetite is increasing. Your digestion is increasing. At the same time as your metabolic rate goes up and your commitment to eating selectively goes up, those old eating habits are just disappearing, leaving your body, leaving you behind. You're dropping excess weight, dropping excess habits, and you are feeling amazing. You have a respectful relationship with your body and with food. You like going to the gym. You like moving. You like exercising. You like drinking water. You like eating less food less frequently, but enjoying it more. So just go deeper and think about how you want to be, how you want to eat, how you want to act, how you want to react. Think about it. Make sure your mind picks that up. You eat the right portions whenever you're shopping for food about to order. You squeeze your fist and remember that's the size 
of your stomach and you're satisfied with less food, you leave food on your plate. In fact, it thrills you, elates you, delights you, empowers you. You love leaving food on your plate. It's a mark of how much you respect your body. Waste food is waste. Wherever it goes, it doesn't go into you. It thrills you to leave food. It delights you to say, no, I don't eat that food. You love eating real food, selectively dropping weight, leaving those negative habits behind, just feeling amazing. So just take just another minute to really wire that in, to feel what it feels like to be normal about food, to be respectful. What does it feel like, look like, sound like, smell like, taste like? Use all of your senses. Wire it in, fire it in, code it in. Your mind will do what it thinks you want. That's it. Your job. your job is to let it know, hey, I want to always stop eating by six. I'd love to leave it. Or I want to put healthy food in first and have no room for anything else. Whatever you want right now, say to your mind, hey, mind, I want this. I require this. I insist on it. Do it now. Just keep saying to your mind, I insist on this. I require this. I want to love my body, to treat it with respect and love, to be satisfied with less, to be nourished and filled by so many things that are good in my life that aren't even food or alcohol. And as your body gets that message, I want to have energy. I want to look great, to feel great. I want to be nourished by so many things other than food. As your mind gets that message, it's going and it's sinking in. The hypnosis is not sending you to sleep, it's waking you up. So feeling amazing, feeling phenomenal, knowing that you are now and forever a selective eater. You're able to extend the pleasure of food you eat less. You enjoy it so much more. Your mind and body are working together. You can understand how you got old beliefs. You can understand that you have the power to let them go forever. So finally, I want you to just move from side to side, just an inch to the left, an inch to the right, just rock, just sway. And just feel those old habits leaving. You just feel those old habits becoming erased, eradicated, eliminated, ending, going on. They're leaving you behind. They're going forever. And at any time, you can just move from side to side and feel those old habits shrinking, fading, disappearing. So knowing this isn't just what you're going to do, it's who you're becoming. Just slowly, calmly, easily get ready to come back to your full awareness. And every day you get to affirm, embody, and state that you are a selected leader now and forever. Until this is who you are. So on the count of one, slowly, calmly, easily, just come back to your full awareness on the count of two and three, feeling wide awake. On the count of four and five, just open up your eyes, fill up your lungs, take a deep breath, just come back and remember, every day you get the chance to state the firm in body, how am I going to eat today? How am I going to show up today? And you get to change twice Every single day, when you wake up and say, okay, I'm going to embody state of firm. How am I going to show up today? You're changing a thought. That's changing your action. And that means you're changing forever. So come back into the room. And I just want to listen to someone who's just typed in, I was obligated to eat meat and it was so disgusting. I can't eat it. I grabbed food as there were so few of us. I had to take it fast. And that's when I had to eat it fast. The first person who finished got dessert or second helpings. So I'd love you to type in some of the things that came up for you when you went back. I had to finish everything on my plate. I had to eat quickly. My elder siblings took all the food. If I didn't eat super fast, I had to hide food and sneak food. And you might say, you no, know, that most of that was really quick. But you get the chance to repeat this and do it over and over again. You may find that when you go to bed and I say, hey, mine, tell me more about how I got these negative habits. All kinds of thoughts will come up. I had to finish everything. Food was love. My family was miserable. Food was the only thing that wasn't horrible. I had to hide food when my parents fought. I started overeating because I was ashamed of my pet, made to feel ashamed. My sister was getting sick. 
And she was allowed to eat more dessert and I wasn't, so I wanted to be sick. Too. My mum didn't eat. She tried to force me to eat. My mum was anorexic. I had my grandmother saying, this girl eats nothing. I thought I was disappointing her. I was hit with a belt to swallow food in my mouth and finish it. That's so horrendous, Katie. I'm so sorry. When I ate a lot, I got appreciated by my family. I cried a lot. My craving was connected to my parents giving me love through food. You see, this is so amazing what's coming up. My stepmother didn't allow us to eat her food, but my sister and I didn't have anything that was ours. We had cheese and crackers. So I'm seeing a lot of, um, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of really, really great feedback and questions mm -hmm. here. And, you know, someone, uh, there's a pretty consistent one, which people are asking, you know, how long does something like this take to work? And of course the replay will be available on the Marissa Peer YouTube channel. But when we're answering the question, how long does it take to work? It really comes down to the fact that things like this that are so deeply embedded in us, sure, a hypnosis can can work, but that's why, you know, Marissa for these last eight years has crafted and created this whole company, right? Rapid Transformational Therapy to teach other people how to do this work because there's a lot of things like you're seeing in the comments right now from everybody else, so many amazing shares and, and so much awareness being put on why people are the way that they are and, and all the discoveries you're making in these different scenes. And Marissa, thank you for that. That was such an incredible and super generous and, and long hypnosis. I'm really excited to go back and do that again on YouTube, but there's so much more to this process and there's so much more to RTT. And for the people in here that are RTT therapists or have experienced it, it's really a process. And that's why she's developed like all of these different tools. So let me know, does anyone in here feel like something clicked or something changed for them? Go ahead and put it in the chat. And when you're seeing that, go ahead and read other people's things and what's inspiring them and, and what's going on with them. Because it might bring more awareness to your particular situation and it might inspire you. And, you know, we've got so many other hypnosis and so many other things available. And, you know, Marissa's founded Dietless Life, which is so incredible. But what I want you to consider now is I've seen so many people already on here with their intentions and what they're going for. Do you feel like you would want to not only transform yourself, but would you want to transform other people in this way too? And that's what RTD has been created for is this is just one tool of 13 main tools, but so much education and so many beautiful things. I mean, honestly, like Marissa could literally can and has spoken for weeks in a row, eight hours a day, talking about how to get people to truly transform and change rapidly and permanently. And I'm seeing in the comments here, I mean, look at, look at all these beautiful comments, people talking about their experiences with RTT, talking about their experience in hypnosis just now. And it's just incredible every single time. But I want you to know that it's possible for all of you on this call. You're all here for a reason. You all came to experience this, but more importantly, you're here in this moment right now. And we're, are always trying to provide an opportunity, provide a chance for people like you to join our army of light, our army of therapists that are going out in the world and doing this transformational work. So this is just one of many tools, one of many different circumstances where you can experience transformation. Like I was mentioning the other techniques that Marissa teaches, there's just so many, right? And the team is gonna be putting call links in the chat and I want to encourage you to think if there's any semblance of you that has ever considered doing this professionally and helping others the way Marissa does. And, you know, Marissa says all the time that on every call, every time we have a class and an opportunity, we have thousands, we have almost 16,000 therapists now that in every classroom, there's someone that will be better than her, right? And everyone has their specialty and everyone has their niche. And they're going to be putting those book of call links in to learn how to do this. And it's so much more comprehensive than this can even really do justice in an hour here. But if you had a great experience and you feel like you want to create this level of transformation and so much more in people's lives professionally, if you want to make your own schedule, you want to help people in a profound way, and you want to charge whatever you want to charge and have freedom and flexibility in your life, we teach you how to do that. 
rapid transformational therapy and the program that we run to teach these techniques and teach these things is so incredible. And our main focus as a company is to provide uh, an incredible level of freedom in your life, in your business, and specifically to be financially successful because a financially successful therapist creates massive impact in the world. And you don't just have to take it from me and we'll answer lots of questions, but we've actually got someone right next to Marissa right now. Um, His name is Rob and I got to experience lots of incredible time with him today. And he's so amazing. And I think he's going to come on the screen here with Marissa. And, you know, it's interesting. Rob is a rapid transformational therapist and, and RTT includes so many things. Um, so many things beyond hypnosis, although hypnosis is one of the most powerful tools within RTT. But he told me that he just worked with a client recently, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago for weight loss in particular. So Rob, can you share that story with us? Oh, and what you went back to with a client too, because it was so amazing. Yeah, sure. So a client came to me recently about this struggle between what it is that they want to become and what it is that they're struggling with. So in the intake, it was all about, they kept going, they were yo-yoing. So they was going up and down on this diet and they kept getting to a certain point, but they just couldn't get over this weight. Because they couldn't get over this weight, they would feel guilt. And so the whole point was about the guilt and the weight loss. We could see that the, the beauty was in the scenes and to go into the scenes, to explain one of the scenes, it was all about the client what happened is there was in the scene, they were about 12 years old and their mum had found out that they'd done something wrong, but they couldn't quite work out what it was. But because I was in hypnosis, as soon as I said, right, when I click my fingers, you're going to know exactly what you've done. They went, oh, it's because I've been caught smoking. And because I've been caught smoking, they've been threatened to take to boarding school. And they've been taken to friends by the boarding school. So when I concentrated on the feeling and I went to the feeling, what happened was the feeling was that they felt scared. They felt alone. And what had happened is this. I asked them to then ask what happens in the scene next. And what happened in the scene next was basically I asked them what happened next. And they said, I went straight to the food. And I said, where's the food? in the bottom of my wardrobe. Why is it in the bottom of my wardrobe? So I took them on the scene. Why is it in the bottom of the wardrobe? Oh, it's because I keep it there. Okay, well, why do you keep it there? What's the feeling behind it? Oh, it's because it gives me comfort. Okay, well, what is the, what is the feeling behind the comfort? Why does it give you comfort? Oh, because I feel this like I'm alone a lot. I feel like I'm on my alone, I'm alone a lot. I feel unloved. Okay, so if you feel unloved, what's really in the wardrobe? Don't look at the food. Don't look at the actual physical element of the food. What is the feeling behind the food? And in that moment there, that aha moment where they realised, oh, it's the love in the wardrobe. So they kept going to the wardrobe, which was their secret stash of food, to get the love that they didn't feel that they possessed themselves. So every time they felt unloved, every time they felt stressed, and every time they felt to the point where they felt struggle or stress, even if it was at work, it doesn't really matter what it was. To get that comfort, they had to go to the cupboard. And the mind just had this habit, it had this repetition, it had been brought up for it and taught in over time that this just became a total habit. So they kept going to the, to the cupboard. So every time they tried to get to the diet and once they got to the weight loss and they couldn't believe that they could be so slim, they got to the edge of their comfort zone. And when they got to the edge of their comfort zone, they would feel that same feeling of, oh, I'm not sure I can do this. When that feeling come, they would go to the cupboard to make themselves feel better. So when we dialogued with the left hand and the right hand between the three scenes and who they are today, they could make the attachment that, oh, okay, every time I try to become who I want to become today, this scares me. So when I get so close to it, I go to the cupboard, which means I go back and I keep getting, and then I feel guilty. And I feel guilty because really who I want to become today is this imagination, but they can't quite work out why they can't get over it. But now they understand this and they understand where the story is and why they behave the way they behave. In the hypnosis, I was able to tell them and understand that they were innocent. They was a child. 
They don't understand this. And it sets you free because you understand that you're innocent. You're not this bad person. You're not this overeater. You're not lazy. You're not these things you tell you you are. You're innocent. And then when you see you're innocent in the transformation, I would put that um, you're indifferent to sugar. Um, you have control. And it was all about they believed they had no control over going to the cupboard because it, it came from the feeling. As soon as the feeling happened, it went straight there because it's the habit of the mind. So as soon as that happened, so in the transformation, I put you're in control, you're indifferent to food, you love exercise, you can do it, you can sustain this weight, you can do this, you can do that. And it's all about empowerment. And then since then, let's say it's been two weeks later, I've had a very close, to, close contact with my client, making sure that you know they're re reaching their goals. And they've just been so positive. They've got a totally different mindset now. They've been sharing pictures with me. They've been sharing things with me and they go and exercise. They've got so much more motivation and they've got so much more belief that they can attain it. That In two weeks, they've already lost five or six pounds and they just believe it's going to happen now. There's no question about it. There's no, I can't do this. And they can see and they've explained to me that when they're at work and when they feel this stress, the first thing they tell themselves is, it's okay because I've got this. I'm in control. So because now that they're able to see that they're in control and they're able to take their power back, they no longer feel that the love is in the cupboard, the comfort's in the cupboard. And also the big thing that I did was I, got, I upgraded the child because I upgraded the child from where it was in pain and where it believed the comfort. I brought it into the world today, which now they're the loving parent and now they parent themselves. So when they feel this feeling, they go, no, it's okay. I can do this. I can achieve this. And this all comes from the transformation when they listen to this every day. And that's the power and the, power and the beauty of it, that we can reframe um, once you said, that's not me anymore. And, and what's so beautiful about what you're saying here, Rob, is you're, you're so delicately shifting between multiple RTT tools that are taught in your expertise explanation, right? So you've got upgrading the child is a tool within RTT that you practice extensively and get practiced on extensively. So you upgrade so much of your own child in the training. And you're also talking about how you're giving her these tracks, right? These recordings that are helping her do these positive affirmations, because yes, the transformation and the emotional shift can happen in a moment, like in a hypnosis, like Marissa just did. And like you're describing with the client, and there's follow through and there's follow up and there's transformation that continues to unravel as that child has been upgraded. And they have these new beliefs and this new ability to see and feel very differently about the circumstances that put them in that position that was undesirable in the first place, right? And making those decisions. So such a beautiful share, Rob. Thank you so much for doing that. And we're going to see so much more of you going into the future. Really excited. Everyone, he's he's going to be coming out with some incredible material soon with us. And Rob is just an incredible person. So thank you for that. Maybe you want to stick around for Q&A if Marissa wants to tag you in for anything. Marissa, are you seeing a bunch of these different things yeah, that are going on said, here? Is there any age limit? Someone who's 60 is certain there isn't. We haven't many people this is a great job for someone who's older because you can work as many or as few hours as you like we've had a lot of people who retired and said oh my god i'm so bored i can't stand it or people who said i retired but actually i need an income and they trained with us and said you know it's such a great job for retiring because i can see one client a day i can see five clients a week i can work two days no days one evening and it is a great job. You'll always have clients. It's one of those rare jobs. When you're older, you're seen as so wise. People don't really want to go to a 20-year-old therapist. Go, oh, you're 65. You're wise. I can listen to everything you have to say. So there's no age limit. We've trained people from 20 to someone who was almost 80, who's actually doing incredibly well because they only work with their own age group. There are payment plans. Someone said, I can't find the right words. Well, we teach, we, we don't allow, we don't want you to read from a script like I'm reading this, but we give you what we call skeleton scripts. We help you to compose the right transformational recording and we give you lots of scripts. You join, you're in a Facebook group and people say, oh, someone's coming in today for pulling out their eyelashes or picking their skin. Oh, I've done that. Let me send you the script that I did. So it's very helpful. Rob will tell you that. And um, yes, I, I, that's the only questions that I could see so far. But what do you think, Rob, about not having the words? You had no background in therapy. How did you take to it so well? Well, I came from IT, so I had no background in therapy, but um, I took to it straight away. But that's because I just love helping people. It was a calling for me. It was all about 
had this inner calling of I want to do something better. I want to help people. I want to be have this purpose where I'm giving back to the world because I didn't want to be this cog in the system anymore. And the support that you get from everybody, the the loving environment, it was like a completely new tribe. It was, and everybody's so supportive that it helps. And yes, you do get these scripts that help you along the way, but that would just be the beginning. And what happens is, is you obviously create your own transformational recordings for the client. And the client will give you everything you need in the intake as long as you ask the right questions. So it's it's beautiful when it all takes place. And the, the why is, why do I want to do this? Because I want to help people. And when you see people transform in front of your eyes, it's just, it's the most incredible feeling ever. It's just the most powerful, incredible feeling. It doesn't just help your client either. It helps, helps you. It helps me. I've had a massive transformation through RTT. I ch- completely changed my life. Even uh, my family would tell you it's completely changed my life. And of course, in the training, we teach us and we say to the client, what do you want to hear on the recording? I always say to people, if I I could make you an amazing recording, what do you want to hear? Because one of us say, I I want to never eat again after seven o'clock. One of us say, I never want to eat cake. I would say, I'd like to eat cake, one piece of cake and not want more. So every client is different. If you say to them, what do you want? What's the outcome you want to live, leave here with? They will tell you what they want. And so you know what to put on the recording. You have your skeleton script, but also you, the client says, I want to hear this. I've always wanted to hear that. I need to hear that. I need to hear that. I can go out to dinner and take my time and pick the food that's so I need to look differently to my husband just because he eats pie and chips. I don't have just because my kids eat loads of pasta and ice cream. I don't have to. So the client will tell you because we teach you how to ask them. What do you want? If this was a magic wand, what do you want? What is the outcome you want to leave here with? And so you already have in your own intake form all the words you're going to put in the script. People say, oh, my goodness, how did you know what to put on the recording? Well, I asked you what you wanted and you told me, and that's how I knew what to put on the recording. And people say, you know, it's so weird after that session. So I, say, I can't even drink cappuccino. If they put chocolate, I have to send it back. I know I can't drink that. I can't have any sugar. On my coffee, people say, you know, I found myself loving the gym. I found myself not eating my kids' leftovers. In fact, there was such a beautiful, beautiful comment from Heather at the end. It was so moving about having five kids and having to finish their food and how she's so different. She's crying as she's writing this. Heather, your writing is so beautiful. You're destined to be someone amazing. But thank you so much for that. So, yeah, we, we you don't have to worry about what shall I say, what shall I do, how shall I make a recording, can I find the words. We train you. It's an amazing training. And we train you within six months to be an amazing therapist. But no matter how great the training is, and it is great, you have a second teacher. Every client you see will teach you how to get amazing, phenomenal results. I think it's the best job in the world. You do too, don't you? I do. And just to add to that, when I first came into RTT and I saw Marissa doing – um, you know, doing her thing, doing her magic with clients. I, my thoughts came in, how am I going to do that? But when what really set me free and what really let me go was when I realized I don't need to be Marissa. I need to be me. I need to do what I need to do. And I need to express to the world how my story, how I can help people. And when you link in with that, you don't compare yourself to others. It sets you free and it powers yourself. And I, I remember having a thought of, how am I going to feel a transformation for 15 minutes? Now, I think, God, I could, I could make this half an hour because I could make people keep it going and keep going and keep putting positive and giving them all this power and this encouragement. But now I feel like I have to keep it at a limit to make it only 15 minutes. So you have this at the beginning because you're not sure how it works. But as you go through the training, you know, and as long as you follow the tools and you listen to people and you get the encouragement and obviously do as the, do as the RTT says, which is, you know, visualize, manifest, believe you can do it and speak to yourself in a very good way, you can achieve exactly what you want to achieve and you can help people in exactly the way that you help yourself. It's, it's like magic. It just happens. It's incredible. And also we help you with marketing. We don't just teach you how to be an amazing therapist. We teach you how to find clients, how to um, write your script, how to, how to niche how to use social media, how to use search engine. We teach you everything to make you an amazing therapist. So it's a great training. And you no previous backgrounds. We teach you a lot, especially when you're coming into the age of weight. We teach you not about nutrition per se, but we do teach you how to help people eat better than they're eating. So any other questions you want me to answer, Skip? 
I think we've gotten most things answered. Um, yeah, I mean, both of you, thank you so much for for coming on and doing this for everybody. This will be live on YouTube, so you can go and look at the replay for this. Um, anything, Rob or Marissa, you'd like to add? Well, you know, I would say the same thing. RTT therapists are very lucky because there's very few jobs that give you so much. A great career will give you meaning, purpose, connection, significance, growth, contribution, making a difference certainty and diversity it's very rare to have all of that but as a therapist every day you're helping people grow you're helping people make a difference and and but when you people are growing like that you're growing too you can't really make a difference that way without making a difference to your own life so you grow you contribute you make a difference you have meaning and purpose because you're doing something that matters so much people say you know you changed my life my it was being bullied. Now they love school I couldn't find love and now I'm married I couldn't get a career and now I've got my own business I couldn't lose weight and now I love the way I look. But we also have connection, significance, diversity, and certainty. It's a great job. And in a world where people are being replaced with AI, they need therapy even more because you can never replace therapists with AI because it's such a personal thing. You can do this training if you really apply yourself in six months, but we don't, people say, you know, what's, is it rigid? No, you can take a year. You say, look, I've got three kids and I'm a single one. Of course you can take a year. We've had police officers and fire crew and flight attendants. And many people train with us while still doing their full-time job. We had people go part-time in this and then gradually go full-time, but we don't make you start the training and finish, you can take as long as you like, but you can do it in six months or nine or 12. It's great fun. You'll love it. We'd love to have you. I'd love to see you in my classroom, virtual classroom or live very soon. Sending you lots of love. Anything else, Skip, you want to say? You don't need any prior experience. You don't need any sort of qualifications to start in this. It's so comprehensive, but it's also delivered so simply and with an incredible method that Marissa and the team have developed over the years. So no matter what your background is, if you feel like you're destined to transform people, you can and you can do it right now. So thank you. Hope to see you soon. Check out my next video here.